Neuropatho key terms is the next topic, so please be sure to write these down. First up is vegetative state. There's brainstem damage, so there's loss of awareness and mental capabilities. And since the brainstem plays a big part in controlling the heart rate and respiratory rate, clients will typically have to go on life support, or a ventilator may be needed to help the client breathe. The next key term is brain death, diagnosed with a flat EEG, an electroencephalography. This is a test that detects abnormalities in brain waves, or in electrical activity of the brain, commonly used to diagnose the severity of chronic seizures, which we cover in detail in a separate video. So with brain death, there's no brainstem reflexes, and also no spontaneous respirations. And this type of death must be evaluated twice by different providers. Okay, the next key term is locked-in syndrome. The client is paralyzed, but thinking is not affected, and they cannot communicate. The next term is a really big one here, so I'd be sure to pay attention. Level of consciousness. So we have the acronym AVPU. A is for alert or awake. V is for responsive only to verbal stimuli. P is for responsive only to painful stimuli. And U is for unresponsive or unarousable, also not awake. Hey, did you see the new study guide that follows along with this video? So cut your study time in half and increase your retention of the need to know key points and memory tricks that love to come up on nursing school exams. Plus, get 900 more videos not here on YouTube, neatly organized in the playlist. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. Now, O is for orientation or oriented. Clients will typically be asked four different questions. For example, person, place, time, and situation. If the client knows all four, then they're oriented times four. Now, ALOC is altered level of consciousness. This is also called a change in mental status and mental status changes. Now, lastly is the GCS, the Glasgow Coma Scale. This scale is used objectively to describe the extent of impaired consciousness in all types of clients from acute medical to even trauma clients. The scale assesses the clients according to three different aspects of responsiveness. For example, eye opening, motor reflexes, and even verbal responses. So let's play a short segment right now. Now, switching gears here, let's talk about the GCS. This is used to measure level of consciousness, and remember, the earliest sign of that increased ICP was that mental status change. So let's break down the GCS score real quick. So a score of 15 is the highest score. This means that the patient is fully conscious. So we like high scores here. As ICP goes up, the GCS goes down. So the key number here to know is less than eight, we must intubate since these clients are in a coma. Basically, the ICP is getting so bad that the brainstem is being herniated, basically crushed, crushing the drive to breathe and the heart rate. And the patient obviously slips into that coma. So the priority here is to notify the provider immediately for any GCS numbers that are decreasing. They should not be decreasing, they should only be increasing here. So the HESI mentions a scenario of a GCS of seven, stating that the patient will require complete care because they're in a coma. So remember, less than eight, we innovate because they're in a coma. And a common NCLEX question talks about a client recovering from a head trauma with the GCS of 14 over two hours ago, but now the GCS score is 11. Guys, we must report this to the HCP immediately. Again, any decrease in GCS is priority to report. Now, there was an interesting question from Kaplan here, stating that a client with a traumatic brain injury and increased ICP with a GCS of five why is it important to provide eye care? And the answer was to prevent corneal irritation. So remember, let's break this down here. GCS of five is less than eight, so the client will be in a coma, and clients in comas may have eyes open. So we wanna prevent that corneal irritation. Now we did see two questions talking about alertness in terms of spontaneously alert, that alert without stimuli, and orientation, basically seeing if the client's confused. 
So the HESI mentions a patient replies with the correct name and location, but incorrect year and date. How should the nurse document this patient's response? And the correct answer was alert and oriented to person and place. Now, another common NCLEX question here is which assessment best demonstrates the GCS? So painful stimuli that is applied and the patient pulls away, this is responsive to pain. And a client responds to a nurse's question, this is responsive to verbal. So don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Again, this is not spontaneous since these clients are responding to a stimuli. So responding to the pain or responding to the verbal cue. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.